welcome back to the channel. I'm going to make a video series on the maintenance required for your first service of a Kawasaki Brute Force 300. Uh, we're doing this on a 2021. It's my daughter's quad. We just picked it up uh, earlier this summer and she's hit. We did a rough calculation. We're, we're pretty close to the 20 hours for the break-in period and uh, we're at 126 kilometers on the gauge uh, and first service is at 150 kilometers so we got a five-day trip coming up here where she's easily gonna break that other 24 kilometers uh, I predict we'll probably throw a 100k on the quad over those five days at least uh, so uh, decided well being that the break-ins over and the, uh, we're getting really close to the first service for kilometers. I'm going to do all of the first service maintenance uh, right now so that she doesn't have to stop riding her quad partway through our, our trip here. Um, first thing is, is the oil change. It requires an oil change and a filter screen or uh, a screen cleaning uh, for part of its first service. Here is the service schedule here. If we if I bring this up to the camera here, there's first service schedule. If you hopefully it'll focus and you can read that. Uh, so we're talking uh, oil change, screen uh, cleaning, uh, and then also uh, oh, uh, the transmission case oil change out. Uh, it's an inspect and change so we're going to change it obviously we're going to inspect it to make sure that it's in good shape uh that there's no uh metal shavings stuff like that that we don't want in there uh and make sure that it was up to the correct level and we don't have any leaks uh idle speed inspection throttle level uh lever play uh check on there uh what else we got here we got uh, spark plug clean and gap uh, it's been running really good, so I don't really know if we're going to do that. Uh, fuel hose uh, replace. Nope, that's one down. That's every five years, so never mind. Uh, next thing would be a valve clearance inspection. That's supposed to be done by the dealer. Um, coolant leak, water hose and uh, pipe. Inspect that, make sure it's not leaking. Uh, radiator clean and inspect. We do that every time ever after every ride we clean it out with the uh with water and uh and we inspect it make sure it's not looking all fouled or anything like that uh final gear case oil there's an inspect and change at the same time so again check make sure it's not leaking anywhere and uh and we'll change it out uh brake operation inspect uh brake fluid level inspect uh, brake pad wear, parking brake inspect, um, wheel and tire damage inspection, uh, rim run out inspection, and there's a couple other things here. Uh, so we got uh, wheel bearings damage inspection, steering inspection, tow in inspection, uh nut bolt and fat all the fasteners just make sure nothing's coming loose and check joint boots uh we don't have uh cv joints on this thing it's two-wheel drive uh so there are no joint boots um with the exception i guess on the swing arm we'll check those up uh so what you need to do the oil change is cracked oil uh we're going with uh motul atv expert 4t 10w40 uh, the temperatures we run in uh, actually fall right in there. We usually run anywhere between minus 10. If it gets colder than that, we will probably not ride normally anyways. Uh, and we rarely get over uh, 30, so we're good for up to 40 on this with this. Um, this is a full synthetic. It's got ester and it meets MA2 standards. Uh, specifications. It also meets on the back uh, API SM and SL uh, specifications, which the book tells you what the, what uh, it needs. 
if I actually look this up again real quick, they ad recommend uh, anything that has API, SG, SH, SJ, SL, SM, and JSO, MA1, uh, MA, and MA2. So we're meeting those. We've got the uh, API, SM, and SL, and this oil also says that it's backwards compatible with other API specifications. And we are making meeting JSO MA2. So this oil is perfect for this bike, meets the weight requirements, what we need. So it's what we're going to go with. You need a drain pan, catch the oil. Uh, you need a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet, uh, deep socket, or you can get away with a short if you have a, a short extension will work. And then a torque wrench to retorque the uh, the drain bolt and the plug for the uh, screen. And uh, it never hurts to have some shop towel around to uh, clean up. All right, so that's everything you need. Let's get to it here. Okay, so we're just going to take a quick look at the dash, take a, a mileage reading or kilometerage reading there and right there the bottom right corner there it's uh 126.3 kilometers is how much riding we've done on this okay next thing you need to do is level the bike so it's uh you want it you know fairly level and uh so that you're uh when you're checking your oil level it's gonna read correctly uh, for the purposes of this video, just because we want to be exact, normally I wouldn't really care. As long as it looks level, I'd go ahead with it. And then I would just fill the oil to the same level it was at prior to me draining it. Um, but for this video, I actually took a, a, uh, a level, a bubble level, and I put it on the frame both left and right and front to back and leveled the quad out exactly. So that's why it's sitting here on a piece of plywood right here is this side was a wee bit on the low side that resolved that issue now to check the oil level is pretty simple it has a sight glass on it that is right here down beside the motor here and it is right there now you can see two lines there there's a a high mark and a low mark and you can see that right from the dealer that it is actually over full if i were to lift this side of the quad just a wee bit doesn't take much you could actually see that oil level change now i don't think i can do that and hold the camera at the same time let's see if i can without wrecking the bike Ugh. i don't know if that showed see that oil level change I think that would have shown it um, so right from the dealer it's actually on the high side which they probably didn't even look they probably just dumped the uh, recommended volume into it and called it a day but a wee bit high in my mind isn't a big deal it's better to be a wee bit high than low so either way doesn't matter but we'll refill it to the full line. Now, the next thing you need to do is to locate your drain plug and your uh, screen uh, plug. So they're on the right side of the motor. So going underneath the right side of the bike here. And we'll just go down here. And it is right side, right kind of near the front of the motor. And there are these two holes right here is your drain plug right there see well, maybe this will work better so yeah here's your drain plug right here so we're right near the front of the motor here's the arm on over here and second bolt hole in now the screen plug is right here it's just a little farther back on the motor and over more towards the not really the center but a little foot closer to center is your uh, screen plug so we're gonna pull the drain plug first 
let that uh, run out as uh, much as it can um, and then we'll uh, pull the screen okay so we're going to take our 17 mil and pull this drain plug now it is righty tighty lefty loosey so that would loosen it and we're just gonna crack it loosen it off there we go and we should be able to do the rest by with our fingers now because this hole is very very narrow can't really get my fingers in there so we'll use the socket without the ratchet what I like to do is I just push up, like push into the hole as I th thread it out. And you can feel the threads uh, jump, kind of skip once you hit the, once it's all the way threaded out. And because I'm still pushing up, it's still gonna keep a pretty decent seal and prevent that oil from just gushing out. And then what I'm gonna do is move it out of the way as fast as I can, hopefully not drop the bolt in the pan. Like that, and it minimizes how much oil I get on myself. And this is where the shop towel comes in play. Just take a shop towel, give it a rinse off, or a wipe down. That oil is super clean still, but with 125 kilometers on it, that's what I would expect. What we're gonna look for is see if there's any metal in it. We're gonna actually, just for fun, it's not required obviously, but for fun, I'm actually going to uh, run a magnet through it and see if it picks up any me metal out of that oil. Uh, see just how well this bike actually broke in and if anything might be going awry already. So we're going to let that uh, run dry. Okay, um, so this has drained out very well. Um, turned out. Uh, right after I pulled the plug it uh, dinner was ready so took a little bit of a dinner break let that drip right out and now we are going to pull the plug for the oil screen so that is the next one over that I showed earlier and same thing lefty loosey righty tighty just kind of loosen that off. We got much more room here so we don't have to use the socket. I'm just gonna make sure that pan is under here real good in case it drips a bit, bit extra oil, which I'm expecting it will. And this is spring loaded, so you're gonna wanna keep a, keep a firm grip on it. And so it's off and we're just gonna pull it out, let it, all, everything come down together, empty out the cap. Just like that, and I don't have a rag with me right here. Oh, let's set this on this board. <clears throat> way, way over there, and we'll grab a rag. Okay, we got a shop towel. So the spring came out with the plug, but the screen itself did not. So we're just gonna grab that. And there it is. I'm covered in oil now from it, but that's okay. And we're just gonna take a close look at this and see if there's anything really, anything blocking it, anything in it. You know what, it's looking really good. Okay. So now we're just gonna let that continue dripping and drain while we clean this screen and uh, and the spring and stuff. Ugh. I'll grab that from the other side. Okay, so got everything out here. Here is the drain plug and it actually does have a magnet in the end to catch any uh, metal shavings, anything like that. It does stick um quite well it's a very strong magnet i didn't see any metal shavings on that when i pulled it out although i didn't notice it right away so i checked the 
uh, shop towel that I used to clean that off and I didn't see any metal shavings in it at all um, so that's so far looking good we'll still check the oil so set that off to the side it's clean it's ready to go back in it's got a an aluminum washer on it um, this is its first oil change this aluminum washer still in great shape and uh, so we're just gonna go ahead with that one pick it up off the ground because I dropped it clean it off again don't want to be introducing any contaminants into the motor especially as one of the things I'm not real thrilled about but I've had lots of bikes that don't have oil filters this one does not have an oil filter so you're gonna definitely want to keep up on your oil change uh, intervals and and whatnot so that uh, you minimize any possibility of of uh causing extra harm because there's no filter to remove contaminants uh here is that's interesting that's a little something i don't know is this a metal shaving now i would expect some like very minor shavings to come off of uh to come off of this because Well, it's not sticking to uh, it's not sticking to it looks white so that actually might just be paint or something that's coming off of my table or something I don't know it looks white and it's not sticking to the magnet so I think we're okay there um, this is the screen cap plug whatever you want to call it this is the spring that keeps the screen up in place this is the screen so first off is they say change this gasket change this rubber o-ring it, it's been such a short service life right now like 126 kilometers i'm not worried about it we're not going to change it out what i'm going to do what i'm looking at is are there any cracks tears anything like that and it looks perfectly fine i don't see any uh malformation or anything like that in there so that is from inside here look at that there's another another little piece right there it's not shiny it's not magnetic it breaks up super easy just pinching through my between my fingers so i'm not sure what that is um i don't know maybe just some machine lube or something i don't know but there's that now aluminum isn't magnetic so if it's pieces of aluminum that would suck but it's not shiny it's not the right color for aluminum so anyways there's the cap here's the spring that holds it in you can see how it's conical on one end and very tightly compressed on this one end and open on this end this conical side goes back into the cap or plug or whatever you want to call it so it goes in like this there's your conical side put that inside the plug and there you go now the screen <clears throat> um, I don't know I thought it said to replace this gasket but it doesn't look like that's replaceable you'd have to replace the entire screen but again re either way is I'm it's a short service interval on it so far um i'm taking a quick look at it making sure there's just nothing you know malformed about it any cracks anything like that and it looks fine that goes inside this spring Let's see if i can hold this with my hook here like this the uh, screen part goes inside the spring and i just dropped the cap but anyways it goes in like that and then that whole thing goes up into the motor now the manual says to use a solvent to clean that screen doesn't say what type of solvent uh so i'm going to use something that most car guys have in stock is brake cleaner we're just going to spray it down call it a day i did give this screen a quick look through to see if the looked like anything was uh like any of the holes were 
or blocked or anything i just put it up against something white and just up against the sky and it looks good i don't see anything in there that causes me any concern but we'll give it a quick rinse off anyways so just just like that we'll throw the spring in there too give it a shot and well we may as well hit the cap as well give that a shot Man, brake cleaner stinks. Pull that all out. Let it dry off. And then we'll get that back into the bike. All right, so next step is put this plug back, put that screen back, and then we can start filling it back up with oil. See you back under the bike. <clears throat> now, before we actually go to Putting, getting this put back in the quad is torque specs for both the oil drain plug and the screen plug are for 18 foot pounds uh, am I right 18 foot pounds 2.5 uh, kilograms or uh, 25 Newton meters so this is foot pounds and we're at 15 18 Let's see what this has here. This has uh, kilograms. And what's that say we're at? 20. Oh, I don't know. 2. Point... I can't read that, but it looks like 2.1 maybe. 234. 2.4 kilograms. I think that might be a 2.1 right there. So, I don't know. I like using foot pounds. And that's a 15. And then add three more gives us our 18. So we're going to use this to actually torque those bolts back into back into spec. Okay, so next thing to do is to get these all put back in. What I like to do is just give a nice little wipe around the hole for these plugs, and uh, you know, just kind of get rid of anything that may not have already dripped out biggest thing is is that when you do this make sure that none of this paper towel rips off and stays in the bike because you don't want that floating around your engine plugging up your oil ports so we're all good there we will first do the drain plug and again what i'm going to do is use the socket because uh of how small of a space I have there to get my fingers in. And I'm just going to set the bolt inside the socket itself. And everything looks nice and clean. We're going to put it up in here, make sure we don't hit anywhere dirty and drive some dirt up into that engine. And we're going to hand tighten that up so that we can make sure that we are not cross threading any of those threads okay so now we're we're butted up we're tightened up there now we're going to put the socket onto the torque wrench that we just uh previously set to the 18 foot pound torque setting and we're going to give that a nice light pull until we hear it click right there that's it, it says it's it says it's torqued that is not much with a long handled wrench that does not that doesn't take much effort at all all right now we're going to get to the screen make sure that uh, we haven't bumped any dirt off the bike into it i'm just going to give this plug a little wipe with a with a rag here on the inside that looks good now we're going to put the screen in the plug and then we're gonna, or the spring into the plug, and then we're gonna put the screen into the spring. So you end up with an assembly just like that. Now we're gonna be careful again. Actually, I see a little bit of grime just on the mating surface here. This just doesn't have a washer. It just has that, uh, uh, what do you call it, rubber seal. So we wanna keep 
that mating surface very clean and then again because it's spring loaded it's you know you got to push up against the the effort of that spring and thread it in once you got it started threading in now we know nothing else is going to drip out we can get this oil pan out of our way so that we can move a little freer and same thing thread it in by hand up until it butts up then we know for sure we're not cross threading you know especially in aluminum it's soft so if you just throw the big wrench on there and start turning it you might not even realize that you're cross threaded before it is very much too late so it's now butted up against the bottom of the bike and again we're gonna uh, put the torque wrench on it and we're just gonna pull on it nice and late until we feel that torque wrench break okay so and it doesn't take much with this torque wrench to break and it's hard to tell when you're on these very low uh, poundage settings so take your time and watch the joint right here if you have this style of torque wrench right there there it broke twice so we're good we know we're torqued to factory specification give a, the area a nice little wipe down just you know put, tidy it up a wee bit for fun i guess i don't know i just like to do that and then it also helps me know if after i put some oil in it makes it more visible if there if there's a bit of a leak uh, no matter how small it is so that's it for underneath the bike now we go up top and we put oil back in see you up top okay so now we're up top we've drained all the oil put the plug drain plug back in we've uh, pulled the uh, the oil screen cleaned it put that back in with plug now we're ready to put oil back in so what you need is a clean filt uh, funnel and that's it well i guess you need the oil too but um to do that right side of the motor pull your uh oil fill plug here and try to as you do that don't let any dirt get in into the motor and just kind of pull that out somehow some reason dust always seems to be able to get underneath the edge of that cap so what i do is i just kind of use a rag here and just kind of pull it away from the filter as or the hole as i do this um, don't just wipe around in a circle kind of start in the center and pull away from from the center and then it'll fall away on the outside of the engine not go on the inside you want to use a clean rag um, and just kind of go like that and then you know i give it some shakeouts in between and just kind of make sure that doesn't get in there so like we clean this motor like we clean the whole bike prior to starting this maintenance and did a really good job on it i thought but it always seemed to get some dust underneath that cap um it's got a like a o-ring which again you want to check make sure it's in good nick uh, good shape there and if it's not replace it but it looks good but yeah dust will always get underneath that cap and it'll sit in here and uh tend to want to fall into your motor you obviously don't want to let that happen so so we'll put that cap off to the side here and we'll take our funnel nice clean funnel put it inside just kind of jam it in there a bit and now we got a nice big opening space now we got some light on that window so this is our oil check window it's got the high lines the low lines and we are basically gonna hope that this will show up on camera so I'm hoping that'll show up on camera I'm not sure how well this is gonna work I got a light down underneath to try to provide some extra light we'll see how that goes and we'll just start putting oil in the manual says to use uh, 1.6 liters for a wet engine so like a wet change like this if the motor was completely dry so it hasn't had oil in it before it's 1.8 liters 
but uh, we're not going to measure it. I got a four liter jug. Uh, basically, we're just going to pour it in until nice and slowly, allow the oil to run its way down. But uh, we're just going to fill it until we get up to the, full, uh, the high line. All right, here goes the first bit of oil. See how we're doing? Is it even starting to show up yet? Not yet. This jug pours quite slowly, which is nice. It's actually got like a built-in spout and everything. That's kind of kind of cool. It does have kind of measure lines here to tell you how much you used, but I can't. Oh, okay. Now I see where it is. So according to this, I've maybe put in about a half a liter so far. So let's keep going. Now what are we at? Well, now we're... If I try to get this somewhere level... Uh, we're getting to, to about one and a half liters. So, looks like we're at about the low line right now. Let's keep her going. Probably won't take much more, so we'll go in little bits. Okay, now we're we're getting up a little above the low line. Go a little more. Let's see what the jug says here. Uh, so we are uh, we haven't quite put in a liter and a half yet, according to the jug, and. We're above the low line, but we're not up to the high line yet, so let's keep going. Oh, dang it, I just spilled some oil. All right, well, we are about halfway between the low and the high. We'll let that settle for a minute. Okay, let's go a little more. Not much, we're, gonna, we're pretty much there now. Jug says we've put in about a liter and a half at this point. And we are still just a wee bit shy of the high line yet. We're getting there. Well, we are just shy of that high line. Well, a wee bit more. Still a little shy of the high line, but some of that oil might be sitting up in the engine still. I'm not sure exactly how it has to run from looks like it could be a straight shot down from where I'm filling it, but it might not be. A little bit more. Okay, Jug now says we have put in a little over a liter and a half. We're getting really close to that high line. So I'm gonna say we're probably good. It's looking good to me.
put the lid back on this jug before we dump any oil. It's an interesting lid. Alright, so after a wee bit of a settle, it is right on the high line. So we are good. We're happy with that. It's a good oil change. Put this funnel right here on top of these rags so it catches the drips. And let's see if we can make this in a little closer. Alright. So uh, hopefully kind of see that there I don't know but we're right on the high line for the oil like right on it I don't know if that's gonna show up on the camera here or not eh, maybe but yeah we're right on the high line so we should be good and that is it that is yeah. well, let's put the uh, the drain plug back in where to put it right here give it a little wipe off make sure it's still clean this isn't the drain plug this is the filler nozzle or filler plug so we'll screw that on you guys are in the wrong angle there we go okay put the fill nozzle back or fill plug back on and that is an oil change All right, so that's the oil change. Done, dusted right there. Um, we do have, uh, you know, our cleanup to do, obviously. Let's, uh, so we do have our cleanup left to do of putting the oil into a jug to take to the recyclers so that we're not uh, just dumping it on the ground, anything like that, and uh, put our tools away, but, if you're interested, stick around. I'm going to run a magnet through this oil and we'll see if there's anything uh, in there that we should be concerned about. If not, then thanks for watching. Do all the usual YouTube stuff. Have a great day. Okay, so I got my little magnetic uh, pickup tool here. Uh, I've cleaned off the end as well as I can. I do use this a lot, so it uh, may have some shavings inside there. Um, but I think if there's anything new in this oil, anything that we need to be concerned about, we'll be able to tell the difference. So we're going to run this through the oil and see what comes up out of it. Hopefully nothing as it's a new bike. So, so ignore the grass in here. Uh, we did the oil change in the grass. So it just stands to reason that we're going to have some, uh, some stuff in there. This is a brand new drain pan. Um, that I bought today so it should be contaminant free I'm feeling a little bit of grit and stuff down there but that could be just uh, uh, what do you call it uh, rock or not rock uh, like dirt that fell off the bottom of the bike while we were doing the oil change uh, stickers are still on the bottom, so I could just be rubbing across those. Uh, we'll see how it pans out here. This magnet's pretty strong. In fact, actually, I can feel it picking up on the uh, hardware on the table here as I move it around. So, we're just going to move this around a little while. See if we can pick up on anything. Try to cover as much of it as we can. All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's let that drip off for a second here. That wasn't nothing, was it? Okay, let's see. You got a good view there. 
I see maybe one little file in. See that right there, right near the center, right near the top of the scent, the very center of it there. Uh, there's something there. That's uh, right here. A wee little bit of something. I don't know what that is. It's not. I'm not sure that's magnetic. I'm wondering. I think that might have just uh, stuck to the magnet. Or like got stuck in the oil. I don't think that's actually magnetic. I'm going to clean off the magnet. I don't see anything else. Um, well, there's a little something shiny right here. I don't know if I can pick that up. See, also, if this was magnetic, it would pull off my finger. I wouldn't be able to just stick my finger to it and pull it off the magnet. So that's only sticking because of the oil. It's actually staying on my finger now. There, it came off because of the oil. It's still on my finger. But if I actually try to stick it to the magnet, the magnet itself is not, is not pulling that away. So that's just sticking because of the oil, not because it's magnetic. I don't see anything else. I think that motor is in really good shape. I don't think we got any concerns at all. Hey, so what I thought what I was seeing was something right there. So did that, did I pull that off? Oh, there it is, right there. Well, like I say there was some little metal shavings still inside this light area that I couldn't wipe out and that might just be it from there because it looks kind of dirty. Didn't look rusty, I can't seem to find it anymore. Oh, maybe right here. Yeah, other than that, this almost looks like something, but it's actually just the magnet. It's got a knock in it, notch in it. Uh, probably hit it hard on something while I was working. So that looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. There's no shavings really to be any concerned about if there's any at all. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's first maintenance of this bike. I think it's going to work out really good. That uh, looks like a really nice clean motor. All right, um, for those that stuck around for this part, uh, thanks for watching again. Have a great day.